Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Good morning and welcome to Trinity Church for this service of morning prayer. This is the fifth week of Epiphany. My name is the Reverend Peggy Hodgkins and I'm the rector here at Trinity in Southport, Connecticut. And I'm so glad to welcome you to this service. Today, there's no special saint to remember, believe it or not, on the calendar in Lesser Feasts or Fasts or the book of our favorite saints, the, cloud of, the Great Cloud of Witnesses. So we'll begin with our confession, which is found in your prayer book on page 79. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others, those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Saying together, Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord has shown forth his glory. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Lord has shown forth his glory. Come, let us adore him. The psalm appointed for today, Psalm 80, found on page 702. Psalm 80. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show us the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O Lord of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. You have brought a vine out of Egypt. You cast out the nations and planted it. You prepared the ground for it. It took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered by its shadow and the towering cedar trees by its boughs. You stretched out its tendrils to the sea and its branches to the river. 
Why have you broken down its wall so that all who pass by pluck off its grapes? The wild boar of the forest has ravaged it, and the beasts of the field have grazed upon it. Turn now, O God of hosts, look down from heaven. Behold and tend this vine. Preserve what your right hand has planted. They burn it with fire like rubbish. At the rebuke of your countenance, let them perish. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, the son of man you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning is taken from the Hebrew Scripture, from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 58, verses 1 to 12. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their transgression, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why have we fasted and thou seest it not? Why have we humbled ourselves, and thou takest no knowledge of it? Behold, in the day of your fast, you seek your own pleasure and oppress all your workers. Behold, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to hit with wicked fist. Fasting like yours this day will not make your voice to be heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose, a day for a man to humble himself? Is it to bow down his head like a rush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will you call this a fast and a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh? Then shall your light break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. If you take away from the midst of you the yoke, the pointing of the finger, and speaking wickedness, if you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in the darkness, and your gloom be as the noonday. And the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your desire with good things and make your bones strong, and you shall be like a watered garden. And your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations, and you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our canticle this morning is Canticle 20, Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, We worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. 
You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our next reading is taken from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 9, 30 to 41. <clears throat> Jesus and his disciples went on from there and passed through Galilee. And he would not have anyone know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man will be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he is killed, after three days he will rise. But the disciples did not understand the saying, and they were afraid to ask him. And they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you discussing on the way? But the disciples were silent, for on the way they had discussed with one another who was the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve, and he said to them, If anyone would be first... He must be last of all and servant of all. And he took a child and put him in the midst of them. And taking the child in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. John said to Jesus, Teacher, We saw a man casting out demons in your name, and we forbade him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not forbid him, for no one who does a mighty work in my name will soon be able to speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is for us. For truly I say to you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ, will by, no me- will be- by no means lose his reward. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our second canticle is the Song of Simeon, Canticle 17. Lord, you now have set your servants free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. As we reflect on the readings, we hear in the book of Isaiah that God wants us to sincerely fast, if we're going to fast, not so much with empty offerings of, you know, doing outward things. God wants us to fast in our hearts by clothing the naked and housing the hungry feeding the poor with bread, sharing what we have with those who have so little. And in the Gospel according to Mark, we actually have two stories. One of them is the disciples asking among themselves, who's the greatest among the twelve? And Jesus says to them, you must be servant of all. You must be last if you hope to be first. You have to have a servant leader's heart. When he takes that child and says, whoever receives me, whoever receives a child in my name receives me, Jesus is saying more than just about children. Yes, children who weren't considered to be full persons in Jesus' day by society, Children must be given the honor and dignity of full personhood from the moment they're born. 
But we have to approach Jesus as children in a sense. When we come to Jesus, when we pray, we have to come with an open heart of a child, with that um, innocence that a child brings, and that sense of wonder and belief. We should never forget, forbid the child within ourselves to approach Jesus, because each of us has that child within us. And Jesus also says that those who are not against us are for us. So those who may not overtly proclaim Christ as Savior and yet don't hinder the way of Christians who are in service to our Lord, they, um, they are not to be condemned. No one is to be condemned. Only God has that right to judge. No one who does a mighty work in Jesus' name can speak evil of Jesus. So today we remember the words of our Lord and remember to approach him like a child. And now let us turn to the prayers. We turn to page 97 in your prayer book. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. And we pray the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Collect for the Fifth Week of Epiphany. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A Collect for the Renewal of Life O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A Collect for Mission Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, Receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And at this time, we offer our own intercessions and thanksgivings. O oh Lord, we thank you for the beautiful snowfall yesterday. We pray that all who travel would be safe. We thank you for the joy of our community here at Trinity. 
Even though we can't gather in person, we know that you are with us and that we are ever connected through Jesus, our Savior. We give thanks for technology that binds us together in this time of the pandemic. We pray for all who are isolated or lonely, those who are disconnected at this time. We pray that you would surround them with your never-failing care and love. We pray for hospital workers, for frontline workers, for all who serve the common good. Sustain them with your grace, Lord, throughout this coronavirus time. We thank you for the vaccines that are coming forth and now are being administered so broadly. Thank you for rates coming down in nursing homes and in care facilities. We pray that you would bless this community and preserve us from this dread disease. Lord, we pray for those on our prayer list here at Trinity, for Patria Swan, Peter Swan, for Stephen Shea, for Joyce Miller, for Robert, for Lillian, for Lee, for Whitney, for Janet, for John Rogers, and for Philip. And we pray for all those who have died. We especially remember Nicholas Tierney in our community, who at only 28 years old died of cancer on Thursday. We pray for the Tierney family. We pray for all of his friends who mourn the loss of this bright young man. Lord, hear the prayers of your people. What we've asked faithfully, may you grant effectually through Jesus, we pray. Amen. And now, as we always do, uh, we invite you into a couple of moments of silence to just be still and know that God is near. In this time, you can just try to clear your mind of thoughts and meditate, or you can ask God what God's Spirit is saying to the church, or just be still. Let us say together the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you 
And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and forevermore. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. Blessings. Have a great day. Bye.